could write a book about my life. <laughs> I don't they wanted me to do it one time. I said, no, I don't want to get into that. My name is Mary J. Ryan. My former name was Mary J. Casey. My father was Thomas Casey, farmer. And my mother's name was Winifred uh, Casey Nee Reedy. Reedy was her own name. And she, he would be Cornelius Reedy. Grandmother, her name was Joanna Reedy Kennedy. Her former name was Kennedy. I'm an Irish immigrant, but I am an American citizen now. I was born in Nina. Well, I wasn't born right, I was out on the farmland for Nina, a couple of miles from there on the Torless Road. That's in the Midlands of Ireland. I was born in the, I was known to be born in the Free State of Ireland. See, England owned my, all the areas around my home, even took land away from my grandparents, my so, father's parents. So, well, my dad, did, they used to tell us all about the war. Right. The war with England and Ireland, you know, they had a civil war then. And they used to, parents used to tell us all, all about the, where the English used to go into their homes and search their homes and do all that stuff, you know. My and grandmother told... used to take care of the young men that was, they used to call them on the run from the English. Right. She would get, take care of their clothing for them and feed them when the, but if they ever got caught in my home, they would have shot my grandmother, the English. Really? Oh yeah, they would take them out and shoot them right in, the, in front of the house. Came out. My, my mother always talked about how she'd see them coming with the lorries, the black and... My father had to race to the mountains a couple of times to get away because they were going to burn the whole town from Nina onto Turles, you know, another town, because some English guy was shot and killed in our, our road at home. But I, I mean, I don't know what part, but they took two young men that was only 17 years old in I never had any trial, but just shot them in my hometown. And they were the famous McCormicks, they were called. They were from another part of Tipperary. And they said when the they buried them in, in, the, in the ground without any casket or nothing else, and they said when they were taken up to be taken back and made, taken to their homeland to be buried, home place where they lived, they, they never had, there were no dissolve in them. They were all like they were only put in the grave. And they brought an old colonel, Bailey, from England and gave him some of my grandmother's land, stole it from them. But their names was Martin Casey. No, wait a minute. Yeah, it was Ma yeah, Martin. It, it was actually my grandmother's land. Her name was, uh, what was her own name? Catherine. Her name was Catherine Ryan. So, but my dad got back some years later. Got back some of the land later. Oh, okay. Yes. When De Valera got into power in Ireland, gave him president, it, that, my dad was a famous De Valera man. I mean, he was what a Fianna Fáil or called, yeah, Fianna Fáil. Father used to help in the elections and all that stuff. He used to do all that kind of work. He's the one that drew up the treaties that freed most of Ireland from yeah. England, right? That, yeah, but did, Michael Collins was the one that gave the North to Ireland, mm -hmm. which was a big mistake to do that. But he thought he was doing the right thing. Right. So. And then De Valera had him executed, which he... <laughs> I mean, he got away with it, De Valera, but doing that, he shot shot him coming back from somewhere. I just They just had a movie uh, last year of that, mm -hmm. in the movie house of, of Michael Collins, because he gave the North to Ireland. De Valera didn't like that. He wanted to get the Civil War going again. So the Irish and the, the, the English was always blamed for it. Just like uh, young Robert's name, you know, Robert, Robert Emmett. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> he, he sold C Robert Emmett, a never fa another famous Irish man. He gave secrets to England. Right. And then he gave sec secrets, to the, uh, secrets to the IRA too. And they, the IRA had he executed him in Dublin and beheaded him and doing all kinds of stuff to him. Everybody asked me, why did I call my son Robert Emmett? <laughs> I think my, my, my uh, Jack, my husband, I think, don't, I don't know, really. So it's... it's, it's, it's the battles are still going on with the old Irish and the English. They're still battling over everything like that. Yeah. I think it's time to end it and, and just yeah. be friends. <laughs> That's how I learned.
happened to dance for us in my aunt's home too. She played the fiddle and the accordion for us, and we danced in her flagstone kitchen. We used to do that. Two brothers. Two brothers? And yeah. what were their names? One sister I had. Martin, and I had a brother, Co Co Cornel, we called him Connie, Cornelius. 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 He's called after my grandfather. And I had my sister, Catherine. I worked in the fields on the farm, a little oh. baby, six years old. I sold potatoes, and I picked the potatoes when I was trying to pick them in the winter was coming in, put them up in a cap bucket, carry them in a bucket, Right. and I used to have to go in the pump and pump water and carry buckets of water and carry buckets of milk here and there, milk the cows. I don't know that work. And what else did I do? I raised turkeys and done all that kind of work and chickens and all kinds of pigs. We had pigs. Yeah. My father used to slaughter pigs a couple of times a year for yeah. meat. And we used to help with that when he was taking care of the pigs, you know. <laughs> Said to me, if I didn't go away to work, but I worked a couple of years first in Ireland before right. I came here. And if I didn't go to America, he would give me the farm. But I knew he wasn't going to. He had to give it to the namesake. Yeah. I mean, Casey. I was but, 23 or 4 or something when I came to, left, 25 when I left home first. Yeah. For well, I worked in uh, down in Bray County, Whitlow, at a summer, a summer job. And then I, I worked back near her home a few a year later, and then my cousin Margaret Ryan, who was, I showed her, her that aunt my, right. in from Long Island, she sent me the papers to come here. Yeah, She's a I came by a big ship from from Cove in County Cork to to America. Okay, I... six days on the ocean. Yes, all by myself. Got on a bus outside the little farmhouse in Ireland right. early in the morning, went to Turles, got a train in Turles. I almost missed the train there. <laughs> <laughs> that, uh, uh, Mrs. Hughes, you know, Maddie's mother, and Maureen Rowan came to Turles with me. And they had to throw the bags in the window of the train. I was almost <laughs> missing the train. But then I arrived in Corbin Cork. I, I had. This girl I worked with in at, in in uh, the ta back in when I was working in Ireland right. a couple of years, she met me in Dublin and she took took me where she was boarding in overnight. I stayed with her okay. in the morning. Then I got on the ship next morning. I took out first an old an old tub boat thing and out to the ship in the water. Ship and the first day I was on the ship, I got seasick. Yeah. Oh my God, I thought I was going to die. Liner. It was very nice. All oh, nice meals and everything on that. In August, a hot day, i never forget it. I thought I would die with the heat. And when I seen New York City with all the traffic, oh my they God, don't I was get terrified. Like we do in Ireland. They don't I get was terrified when I seen that traffic. I was so scared. I said, I want to go back on the ship and go back. <laughs> and I, I was put on a bus. In New York, and I went came to Philadelphia. And Angela, which I knew already, was another cousin. She was in already came to America before I did. She met me at the at the bus station in Philadelphia. Okay. Yeah. She since she went back. And I was home. working in Chestnut Hill first when I came. Then I went to Elkins. Park. I worked at. You ever hear of them Bingswangers? It's been the real estate industrial real estate. I worked for them a couple of years before I got married. I went, first I went to do waitress work and I didn't like that. I didn't know the money and I didn't know the food or anything else. Oh, so I changed and I went in and lived them. Right. With the bing swingers I'm talking about. They were very nice people. Very nice very people? Very nice, yes. Okay. I took care of, they had twin boys. Twin boys, okay. Yeah, and one, they had one little girl and then since I left it they had another little daughter. But they're married now, they're kids already. Okay. The dancers. I go a lot of times on my own and I was a little scared at night. Yeah. But getting off of buses and going in so back. I met him here in America. Okay. John T. Ryan. Ryan. I used to go to a lot of the dances, the Ar some of the Irish dances, but this wasn't an Irish dance that I met him. I went to only Pennsylvania to a social on Halloween night. Okay. And that's where I met him, at a ballroom there, dance ballroom. 
That took place in Elkins Park, Pennsylvania. Yeah. Thank you. When I, when I got married, I went to live there. Belmar Park, actually, I lived in. Okay. Little rented place there. And then we got when we had a couple of kids, and we moved. We were lived on Warren Avenue, Belmar, for about four or five years. Okay. And then we. Met. I was eleven months when I had me. Thomas was born, and Robert was born in nineteen. I guess. Sixty-two. Less than two years, yeah, a little less than two. Marianne. Marianne. And Doris. Doris and. And Mar Marguerite. Shannon. I mean, um, Peggy. He called her Peggy for sure. Peggy. He died in 1969. They hardly, they barely knew my husband. I don't that. even remember him. She was yeah. 16 months old only. Yeah. He didn't get home here. He died over. He used to stop and visit his mother in Belmar Park. Right. Uh, and he stopped the Friday night there, and that's where he died. Got come in the door and he fell in the chair. That was a terrible couple of weeks or a month for me afterwards. I, I didn't know whether I was going to survive or not, you know. And I think I was in on my church. I think my church kept me together, you know. It did. Because I never missed going to Mass. And I still don't miss going, you know. I was always there with my kids. I even had a sitter come in and stay with the kids when I go to church. It's good. I never miss going to church. But I'll you have to survive no matter what. I yeah, guess. well, I, you know, I was always concerned, will I, will I make it, you know, will I, will I be able to keep my kids together and all that. So it was day in and day out of them. I was never awake. I might go out in the evening and have a babysitter come in. I was a mother. I just didn't, I didn't work. Okay. See, I didn't, Jack didn't ever want me to work when I got married. That was it. So I had, he, he said was, I should be with the children. And yeah. I had done everything with the kids. Every single thing. I mean, I took them to the stores, I'd done the shopping, I'd done everything. I made sure they went to school every day. She's home here with me, yes. Okay. She takes me everywhere. If she wasn't here with me, I w I'd be a shut in. <laughs> now that I can't walk much anymore, <laughs> I'd be a shut in. I mean, everybody else is busy, you know, they can't do it, you know. So she takes me to the movies and out to dinner and takes me and she actually went to Ireland with me. Right. And we went to Vegas, we went to uh, uh, Washington, where that priest was ordained. I go everywhere. I wouldn't be going anywhere if she wasn't here with me, you know. So